organ, or, organization, your organization needs to be clear. That means when you go from point to point, people know that you're going from point to point. Please do not regard this as primarily an essay writing activity. In an essay, people can read once and for all when you're saying next comes this, and they can, they can intuit when you're making a transition. In speaking, that's not nearly the case. It's really important to be very definitive and clear when you're going from point to point. It needs to be parallel. Parallelism I'll talk about later. That means that the points that you have need to be the same size, the same kind, the same weight. And you need to have logical, sequential uh, arguments that are backed with sound and, re and reasonable, relevant details. I'll talk about that more. It mentions your references. Don't worry about that. We'll get to that after speech one. It says there should be no grammatical word choice, civility, or pronunciation errors. I'm going to have a certain amount of latitude because we're all friends. Slang is fine up to a certain point. Every speech you ever give should be prepared in light of the audience that you have. So if you have an audience, who is a particularly casual kind of audience, then you can be casual in your terminology. If you have a college audience, then you ought to use correctness as much as possible. It mentions pronunciation errors. You're not going to mispronounce your mother's name or your brother's name, but when we get to speech three, when you're talking about past speeches, you're going to be introducing, in some cases, people whose names you might not be familiar with, or places whose names you might not be familiar with. If you come up here and say, well, I don't really know how to pronounce this, but I think it's Magadasha, whereas in reality it's Mogadishu, which is the capital, I think, of Somalia, then you will not get your 20 points. If you're not sure of the pronunciation, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> well, you Learn can take it. it. Learn it, practice it. Learn it, practice it. Yeah. Ask someone? Yeah, ask someone. Now, a little tip. Who is assessing your speeches? Who needs to know that you're pronouncing something correctly? Okay. So, whom might you ask about how to pronounce it? Even if he is incorrect himself. Wikipedia. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. No, I would say, though, if you're not sure, ask me. I have, I am familiar with several different languages. And at the very least, if I give you a wrong pronunciation and you do it, you're going to get credit for it because I think it's correct. <laughs> so <laughs> civility, civility means being polite more than anything else. So for instance, when I was giving presentations to the Public Utility District in Wenatchee, I met with the commissioners and with my co-presenter in advance. We asked the commissioners, what do you expect of the people who are going to be presenting to you? And this agriculturalist from Chelan, Washington, who's on the Public Utility Board, one of the commissioners said, well, we're all friends, but I really don't like it when people who present to us call us you guys. Because <laughs> I'm 57 years old. I'm established in the community. It just doesn't sound right. Now, when we're talking in the street, on the street, it's OK. But in a presentation, don't say you guys to us. So think about this when, you, when you're preparing your speeches for each other. Here, think about the kinds of impressions you want to make in the language you choose. Word choice, grammatical errors, OK. That's the end of organization and argumentation.